Welcome to Networking and Health Information Exchange, Supporting Standards for EHR Application. This is Lecture D. Lecture D wraps up the discussion on application standards. Specifically covered are standards for management of workflow with multiple systems and some regulatory standards. Slide 2. The objectives for this unit, Supporting Standards for EHR Application, are to understand other standards that help to support networking and reporting requirements, as well as functionality to optimize the connectivity among heterogeneous systems deployed within a single enterprise. Understand single sign-on standards and the HL7 Clinical Context Object Workgroup CCAO, standard. Understand regulatory standards and understand issues relating to person identifiers, master patient indices, and record locator services. These regulatory and regulated standards are important mainly for reporting purposes. They have been developed within HL7 as a work product of the Regulated Clinical Research Information Management Working Group. Members of this group include CDC, FDA, EMEA, European Medicines Agency, the International Conference on Harmonization of Technical Requirements for Registration of Pharmaceuticals for Human Use, ICH, as well as the usual set of stakeholders in HL7. In the domain of public health, the Individual Case Safety Report, ICSR, is important as this is the electronic form that is used to report adverse medication events. It is a joint effort between HL7 and ICH, with the above-mentioned groups participating. This standard is significant in that its use is intended for the global community. It is used for reporting to both the FDA and to EMEA. The Generic Incident Notification is a generic standard for reporting any adverse event. In the domain of regulated products, Structured Product Labeling, SPL, Regulated Product Submission, RPS, and Common Product Model, CPM, are each discussed in the following slides. The three regulated studies standards are the Annotated ECG, AECG, Clinical Trial Laboratory, and Stability Study for Drug Research. The business driver for the Structured Product Labeling, SPL, standard is the U.S. HHS Directive. This directive is to develop a standard for communicating the content of drug product labeling in both a human and machine readable format to serve as the basis of a national repository and to create a national repository of all current approved labeling on the National Library of Medicine Daily Med website. Daily Med serves as the official source of approved labeling for prescribing physicians, patients, and healthcare providers and is based on HL7 Clinical Document Architecture, CDA, and is computer readable. SPL version 3 complies with the new FDA Physician Labeling Rule and includes an encoded highlight section among other features. SPL version 3 is mandatory in the U.S. for all new indications and efficacy supplements, with multi-year phase-in for remaining types of labeling applications. SPL is important because of the structured approach to drug labeling, noting potential adverse effects. The Regulated Product Submission, RPS, standard is for conveying product information to regulatory authorities. It is used globally and was developed by HL7 and ISO with input from ICH. RPS can carry an ICH CTD Common Technical Document submission and other submission types for drugs, device, veterinary products, food additives, and other regulated products. RPS storyboards include initial submissions, updates, amendments, withdrawals, references to other submissions, etc. Testing team members represent pharmaceutical industry, medical device industry, other vendors, and associated divisions from the FDA. Rather than creating a standard for any and everything that could be given to a patient or used on a patient, HL7 has created a generic standard for dealing with a variety of products called the Common Product Model, CPM. 
The CPM Domain Information Model relates to modeling of any kind or instance of a product. This standard depends on a rich set of storyboards to make sure the standard has adequate coverage and functionality. The storyboards relate to the different perspectives on what a product is and how it is used. For example, a crutch or walking cane might be a common product that requires certain parts that need to be modeled. What do you think such a model might include? Examples of a CPM include medication, including vaccines, devices used in medical services, and anything else to which a person can be exposed. Visual integration messages are an interoperability specification for visual integration of applications that allow users to experience an integrated computer user session on the desktop. Clinical Context Object Workgroup, CCOW, is an interoperability specification for visual integration of applications that allows users to experience an integrated computer user session on the desktop. It enables disparate applications to synchronize in real time at the user interface level. CCOW provides two discrete functions. Facilitates a process called context management that links subjects to applications and provides single sign-on that enables secure access of disparate applications by a user. Messages are specified that flow between presentation level applications that synchronize the user identifier, patient identifier, and or observation identifier across multiple applications for a single sign-on, single patient lookup user experience. Context management uses subjects of interests such as user, patient, clinical encounter, image, lab report, charge item, etc to virtually link applications so that an end user sees them operate in a unified, cohesive way. Context management is valuable for both client-server and web-based applications. Single sign-on works closely with content management to enable the user to identify a subject, that is, a patient, and have access to all applications containing information about the selected subject to which the user has access. This method eliminates the user from having to log on to multiple systems, enter patient ID, and request certain information. The end result is an aggregated view of all patient information across disparate applications. CCOW products define standards that enable the visual integration of healthcare applications, entail the coordination and synchronization of applications so that they are mutually aware of the set of common things, for example, patient ID, patient name, encounter date, etc., and define a protocol for securely linking applications so that they link to a common concept. The application tells the CCOW compliant context manager that it wants to set the patient context and provides the context manager with an identifier that indicates the context subject, for example, the medical record number for the patient of interest. The context manager then notifies the other applications that the context has been changed and each application obtains the patient's identifier from the context manager. Each application then adjusts its internal state and data display accordingly. This all happens in real time. The current version of CCOW is version 1.6. The value of CCOW connects and interfaces multiple disparate applications such as labs, meds, cardiology, scheduling, billing, etc. CCOW provides easy access to data and tools for a family of users, including physicians, nurses, therapists, administrators, etc. CCOW enables connectivity from kiosks as well as personal workstations located in hospitals, clinics, offices, homes, etc. In too many instances, the user has to log on separately to the individual systems and interact independently with each system. CCOW makes these disparate systems appear to be a single system. It is likely that this standard will be required for many years to come. Here is an actual example that shows several applications that are linked through the use of CCOW. 
In this case, the X-ray image, demographic data, a flow sheet, and other applications are linked and available to the user. These are some key standards that are an important part of obtaining global interoperability. We have previously discussed decision support services and terminology service. Standards are being developed for Entity identification to manage and maintain identities within and across domains, localities, or products. Record location and retrieval to discover, retrieve, and update records in distributed environments. Decision support services to support evaluation processes such as clinical decision support. And terminology service to retrieve, maintain, and navigate clinical terminologies and ontologies. Entity identification is a necessity if we are to share data and resources. Both HL7 and IHE are creating standards and supporting material for these areas. Ambiguity in identifying the patient locally and regionally is particularly important. These specifications would be necessary parts of enterprise and product applications such as inter-enterprise, such as NHIN and RIOS. By functionally specifying behavior, roles between applications and products are clarified and the technologies supporting them can be profiled and sharpened. Intra-enterprise. Standardization on functionality allows for better integration of off-the-shelf and custom development environments and promotes more of a plug-and-play environment. Intra-product facilitates vendors' ability to integrate third-party value-add components and speed up the design phase with higher confidence. Custom implementation affords organizations wishing to custom develop the opportunity to later integrate off-the-shelf. For example, a typical patient over 65 is apt to have drugs prescribed by three to five providers. In order to create an accurate medication history, we must have the ability and the trust to combine the records from multiple sites. There are many other examples. The same arguments could be used for any healthcare object. For example, drugs need identifiers that should track from manufacture to use. GS1 creates identifiers that would permit us to do supply chain tracking. Today, Probabilistic algorithms based on patient demographics are the most frequently used approach to establishing patient identity. Functional linkages to certain items are critical to support the concept of a patient-centric aggregated patient record. Providers often have many addresses, their practice, a clinic, a hospital, and an extended care facility. A single identifier would ensure greater odds on tracking and communicating with providers. The U.S. has implemented a National Provider Identifier System for Provider Identification. For employers and facilities, the IRS identifier number works as a unique identifier. For healthcare plans, a health plan identifier would be useful to uniquely build the plan into CPOE systems to determine authorization issues. The problem with personal identifiers remains a problem. Currently, a set of parameters is used to generate an identifier. The next slide identifies these parameters. The Master Patient Index, along with a Record Locator Service, is critical in a regional or HIE organization. This index must serve local, regional, and national needs. If patient data is to be aggregated, we must know who the patient is and where the patient-centric record is located. IHE provides an implementation guide that addresses these topics. The below 10 parameters are most generally used to identify the patient in the absence of a unique identifier. Many people add the SSN to this set and, in fact, the SSN is one of the best identifiers. Medical record number, patient surname, patient given name, gender, telephone number, zip code, city, date of birth, year, month, day, next of kin surname, given name, and physician surname, given name. These parameters are weighted as to the uniqueness they provide to the person's identity. Other algorithms exist that use a probabilistic model. All have a finite error rate. 
Master patient index systems are necessary to locate a patient, particularly if the patient has multiple numbers across many systems. A clinic may assign one number, the hospital another number, an employer another number, and the insurance plan another number. The MPI links all of these numbers together. The MPI contains required data to identify and distinguish the patient across healthcare facilities and levels, includes some patient demographic data, may include multiple identifiers the patient is assigned across various facilities, and has a primary identifier. The MPI may also provide a linkage to other family members. Issues of privacy and security are factors in designing and accessing MPIs. A number of other standards contribute to networking services. Examples include genomic and proteomic data as part of an EHR, rule-based data exchange to identify what data should be included in a business transaction, whether reimbursement, clinical, or research. Filters for data presentation, for presentations of data related to events and circumstances. For example, what is reported to the attending physician on admission is different from what is presented on discharge. Consent management, standards for getting and recording patient consent for both patient care as well as research. Identifying candidates for clinical trials. Standards to scan a patient record to identify patients based on requirements defined in the standard, plus follow-up for patient consent. Record linkages. Links various records and repositories. Notification services. Standardized approach to notification on various media including mobile devices. Natural language processes. Approaches to natural language processing for free text entries and mapping services in transition, real word inclusion. The Clinical Genomics WG produces standards that enable the standard use of patient-related genetic data such as DNA sequence variations and gene expression levels for healthcare purposes, personalized medicine, as well as for clinical trials and research. This WG also defines what data needs to be exchanged and creates standards for doing so. The Clinical Genomics Standard Family Tree specifically addresses Family History Pedigree Topic, Genetic Variations Topic, Gene Expressions Topic, CMETs defined by the domain, and messages for the exchange of family history and genetic information. This slide illustrates products of the Clinical Genomic Workgroup. Note the RMIMs and the DMIMs behind this model, previously discussed. Data content is referenced to the HL7 RIM and supports different data interchange mechanisms, version 2 messaging, version 3 messaging, and uses CDISC SDTM data model. Its applications include support for genetic testing, family history, and pharmacogenomics implementation. This lecture identified a few of the additional standards required to support networking and the exchange of data. CCAO is an important and powerful standard that has great value in today's world of disparate systems. The other standards represent more domain-specific activities. We discussed regulatory standards, standards for identifying and managing patient identity, and record locators. Many standards have yet to be developed to support the full requirements for networking and data sharing.